What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, an absolute metric ton of news for you today. Cyberpunk news, video game awards on The Last of Us 2. We've got a YouTube update. We've got Susan Wojcicki calling YouTubers. We've got Matthew McConaughey roasting Hollywood. So much more. We are also only 20,000 subscribers away. We can do this. If you haven't yet, Subscribe today. If we reach a million by Christmas, I will promise to give you all one month off of me be sub begging. All right? Make a million. Get a whole month off by of me saying, hey, everybody, there's a little red subscribe button right down here. Please, please, please click it. Although, please do. Now... Cyberpunk 2077 is just days away. In fact, it is literally installing on my system right now, uh, preloading through GOG.com. I have a brand new monitor. I'm exceedingly excited to play this game on December 10th instead of watching the Video Game Awards. And it looks like there's been some issues here. And uh, I want to point it out. So a fellow YouTuber, well, there's oh, lots of Cyberpunk news, but... Fellow YouTuber uh, receiving DMCA strike and a DMCA takedown, threats of legal action from CD Projekt Red over uploading a review of the game, um, and it's not great. Um, it's not a great look for CD Projekt Red. That said, they did make it pretty clear that uh, this was going to be their policy. So, and this is nothing against Dreamcast guy. I think his content's excellent, um, but you see here. Here's what you need to know about creating your Cyberpunk 2077 video before release. We're getting closer and closer to a launch, and chances are some of you will get your hands on Cyberpunk 2077 before release day. However difficult it might be for us to achieve, our ambition is for gamers across the world to have the same spoiler-free experience at the same time the game releases. This is why we kindly ask that you do not stream or Let's Play or release similar content before December 9th, which is two days from today. After everyone who does, uh, after that date, however, uh, yeah, we want you to stream and blah, 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 blah. Um, now, it's interesting because it's funny because, like, there's nothing more cyberpunk than striking down videos of people uh, sharing your videos. But we had an issue here now where uh, Dreamcast guy talked about and shared some pictures. Yesterday, I played Cyberpunk 2077 for 12 hours straight. I just want to say this. Combat is very fun. I'm playing stealth and using riffles. I'm assuming it means rifles. Body tech upgrades, maybe not though, are cool but expensive, so I don't have many yet. Writing has literally taken my breath away. Having the screenshot DMCA'd. Then, on December 5th, CD Projekt Red has also asked me to tweet... Actually, I'll go back. Uh, legally, I've been told I cannot speak about Cyberpunk 2077 until Wednesday. Big video then. Much love. Now, here's one thing I want to defend Dreamcast Guy on. Uh, this is kind of bull. Uh game journalist which he is all right a modern day one the one that act the kind that actually matter game journals have been writing countless articles about the video game for months why is he the one getting silenced all these journals writ written hundreds of articles about the game how to play the game i mean look here's here's two new articles i'll show you okay how romance works in cyberpunk including tons of screenshots Okay, how come this article exists, right? Whether you're looking for a long-term commitment or a one-night stand, the Cyberpunk 2077 romance option system is much deeper than that of The Witcher 3. In fact, it sounds pretty close to how you'd make friends and come to realize your love interest in real life. Here's everything we know about how romance works. Again, a detailed breakdown of an in-game uh, uh, feature, right? What we've seen so far, it looks as though characters can be romance and may have their own side quests, which should keep uh, make keeping track of all your lovers a bit easier. In GameSpot's Cyberpunk 2077 Romance Overview video, they outline that some of Cyberpunk characters will contact V throughout the game to ask for help for specific games, but they're also checking just a chat from time to time. If you're particularly interested in pursuing some special someone, seize every opportunity to talk to them and it could help you get closer. All the way back to 2018, we see a Eurogamer and then IGN. Again, 
how hooking up works. There are multiple reasons why Cyberpunk 2077 has an M rating sticker slapped on the box, and a couple of them cover its strong, spicy content. In a city set in the not-too-distant future, adults are very much still doing those type of things. So if you're able to seduce a character, then you'll see a short cutscene most likely fading out to signify that some time has passed before you can carry on playing. If working at a long-time relationship is not a priority for you, we can also know there are, uh, there are <laughs> spice workers in the game. There's actually a faction called the Moxes, which actively protects these type of workers. And then they have all of, you know, this particular, I mean, all these articles on Cyberpunk, right? If we just go to PC Gamer, look at all these articles on Cyberpunk, many of which include gameplay footage. How about this GameSpot article? Cyberpunk 2077 will have a massive 43 gigabyte update after launch. How do you know that? Because you have the game. Uh, or I suppose they released. And you know who they... You know who they sourced? Dreamcast guy. So let me tell you. Let me ask you. IG or GameSpot gets to write this article based on information that Dreamcast guy put out. Right? But CD Projekt Red threatens him with legal action. That's not fair. Now, I, I know it feels cringy to say, but that's not fair. But it isn't. CD Projekt Red public relations ma manager Fabian replied to Dreamcast Guy's tweet saying it's an update, but not the one that's planned to drop on day one. It's an update, but fun twist. It's not the one we'll have for launch. Suggesting that the Cyberpunk 2077 will receive a day one patch alongside the 43.5 gigabyte patch. On PC, the game requires at least 70 gigabytes of storage. Uh, space to install, though it's unclear how much it takes up to install on consoles. Back in August 2019, the European PlayStation Store purported that Cyberpunk needed at least 80 gigabytes. CD Projekt Red hasn't commented on the file size. With games on the last on console, sometime going over 100 gigabytes, and this game being dozens of hours long RPG, yeah, it's huge. I don't really care about that. Now, I understand when you have a 100 gigabyte game and you end up having... Uh, um, you know, you want to have three or four games installed that you're enjoying all at the same time. Well, that's an issue because you don't have space. Um, and But my question is, I don't understand what makes Dreamcast guy different, right? You see him say, CD Projekt Red just removed my Cyberpunk 2077 video. And I will say, I did not see it. So if it included a ton of gameplay footage that was not released... That'll happen. Um, and you see, like, most people are kind of against him. No sympathy for this dude's complaint or people trying to make CD Projekt Red the bad guys here. Should have double-checked if you could post that before doing bare minimum effort. 11 hours is extremely doubtful when hit to the main title card. Um, you know, I was in the middle of watching it. I don't know. They removed it because it's under embargo, but, I mean, CD I'm sure Dreamcast guy didn't sign any kind of embargo. Then you said, he says, legally, I've been told I cannot speak about Cyberpunk 2077 until Wednesday. Big news then. Much love. Sounds like he didn't get in too much trouble. Um, but then saying, CD Projekt Red also has asked me to tweet that they did not give me a copy of Cyberpunk 2077. I bought my own and it accidentally shipped early. My thoughts are not breaking any embargo, just talking about my own impressions as a random gamer. I will talk more about Cyberpunk soon, seeing your questions and everything, waiting until I can make a video and more extended thoughts. The game is great though. But you see, Cyberpunk's already on eBay. For four thousand three hundred dollars, four thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Let's see if it's actually on there right now. Let's let's just take a look quick if it's still on there. Uh, no. Here's five hundred forty nine collector's edition. There's already like all sorts of collector's edition box pre order confirmed. People are flipping their you know, this, everything. The secondary market on Cyberpunk is insane. Uh, everything's being scalped. And, uh, you know, if I go to what price plus shipping high is first. Here you see $2,000 for the Xbox One X Cyberpunk Limited Edition. 
$2,000 for the limited edition, $1,800 for the chair. Uh, the scalpers are insane. The limited edition phone, $1,500. I mean, Jesus. You know, it's, 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 it's stop. People, stop, please. Stop paying these people. $4,350 with 46 bits. That might be the most expensive cyberpunk game in history. But interestingly, with reviews, you see here Dave Thier on Forbes saying uh, a warning about cyberpunk reviews. Now, we know a lot of games journalists have been whining about not getting their review copies early. CD Projekt Red doesn't care, and neither do I. While Cyberpunk 2077 finally comes out on December 10th, it is destined to be among the biggest games of the year. It will be the biggest game of the year. Why? Because it's not just on next-gen consoles. It's on all the previous consoles and PC on day one. That's something that games like The Last of Us 2 uh, and Ghost of Tsushima didn't have. Essentially, you have three times the market on day one available. Um, but in terms of the conversation... Especially since happening since December with less competition, expect the discourse to go hard and not let up for months. So far, uh, a few weeks ago, a QA tester pointed out that a still unfinished 175 hour game, while well, this is definitely on the high end, nothing that we've seen indicates that this will be anything less than a massive experience. So far, code distribution seems a little scattered for the game. I obviously can't speak to every outlet, and I feel confident that some people probably had a bit more time with it, but I've yet to receive a code. And I know that a lot of other people likely are in the same boat. So at this point, even if I do get the code right now as I type this article, it makes it functionally impossible to get a review out for release. Even a little more time, a week or maybe, would make it process of slamming through the game in time before release or an embargo a few days before the release is a nightmare. Well, here's the thing. You know, he goes on to talk about be careful with reviews because people couldn't possibly play the entire game. The most obvious problem is that it just sort of makes your experience of the game worse. If you push past the point where you would have put the game down or put up and play the game for six hours more, you're going to have a bad time. That doesn't necessarily mean the scores go down because as a reviewer, you know that's part of the unpleasantness it might be because you're playing the game in a natural way and so that you can forgive a certain, you know, sins. Essentially, reviewers are going to be slamming through the game to get the reviews out and might actually lower artificially lower the scores. It says, again... I cannot speak for every single outlet out there, and I don't know if other reviewers have had more time, but I just finished Valhalla in 65 hours, and it took me like a month. Others might take more or less time to rack up the many hours in a single game, but it feels like a reasonable amount of time to take on a massive game. No game, even one, has as huge as Cyberpunk 2077 is giving people the amount of time before review. I'm not saying scores will be higher or lower because these things can affect things in all sorts of ways. But if you're reading a review in the days before or after release, it's important to note that it was most definitely produced under very different circumstances than what a normal playthrough would be. So keep that in mind. That's a reasonable point to make. Um, I don't think Cyberpunk needs a ton of reviews. Um, the player reviews are going to be massive and you're going to see plenty of that. Plus, nobody really trusts games journalists anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.